Let's talk about our swale. What we did wrong, what we did right, and what we'd do different next time. We snuck out, it's about quarter to seven in the morning. It's been raining for quite a few hours. And guess what that is? Water. Hey. So, I'm sitting in our swale. It's dry, dead, dusty, and hot. Hey folks, good morning. It's Corey from Rockpile Off Grid Homestead. Me and my wife live here on 100 acres, fully off grid, in uh, a very hot, dry, arid climate. It's either feast or famine. In summer, it's, as you can see, dry, dead, no water for months. In winter, there's floods, plenty of water. So it's either really hot and dry or really wet. So we built a swale some time ago. It was our first one we ever built. Dug, I should say. We, d we dug a swale. It was our first one. Uh, we watched a lot of videos on it, on how to build swales, but when you start putting stuff into practice, it's always a little bit uh, different, a bit awkward. All right, let's just start from right here, on this ground level up here. So what we did is we marked it out with an A-frame to a, on a contour line. Our swale actually joins onto a off contour drainage ditch, which is very similar shape to this swale, but, we, but it's slightly off contour. So that was kind of our start point down there. And that's how we ended up with this transition of swale right to the end. We leveled it with the A-frame. That actually went really well. I was very surprised how something so simple like a few bits of wood and a string with a weight could be so accurate. So I'm gonna give that one 10 out of 10 because we checked it with the laser and it was very, very close. Like it was really good. So what do you do once you have the level? Well, then we started digging. We started digging with the slope. Now this is the first thing that we did wrong. So the slope here, now that slope is too steep. In future swales, we're going to make this slope at least a three to one ratio, at least. Because right now, probably call it one to one, maybe 1 1.2 to one. Not quite 45 degrees, it's a little bit like that. What water we did get coming in was actually doing small little erosion paths as it was coming down the slope because it was picking up speed too quickly and coming down. So we want to try and eliminate that. All right, so I think that's the slope side taken care of. After we come down the slope, we have the, the bottom of the swale, the flat part in the center. I'm actually pretty happy with that, with that bit. It turned out quite level, uh, like long ways. It was pretty good. It's wide enough to walk down. It's wide enough to, for us to get a, one of our heavy industrial type lawn mowers down, which is only about that wide, like a walk behind slasher type thing. Because our thought was that we wanted to like chop and drop um, as we get growth in here, which you can see here, we've, we did experiments with different seeding and whatnot. So we've left this uncovered and behind the camera, uh, we covered with mulch and put some seed in. So that's actually got some growth in it now. So the bottom here is really good. I'm happy with that. I think next time we will definitely mulch the entire bottom. Actually, we'll try it and mulch everything. Every exposed bit of dirt that we create, we want to try and cover in mulch and try and establish some sort of cover crop 
like growth. So this bare earth is not ideal. We know that. So that's another thing for the next one when we do the next one is mulch, cover crop, every bit of exposed earth that we create. So we got we learnt that as well. But as far as the actual bottom of the swale goes, mint. Lo love it. Happy with it. So, and where I'm sitting right now, uh, this is our level sill. Got my hand on the very corner of the level sill, and it goes approximately that way, about four meters. So, let's just get a better look at the level sill, eh? All right, so I'm sitting in the middle of the level sill. We've checked this with the laser, the level, and the A-frame. It's very level, so we managed to do that successfully. Now what I think we've kind of overestimated is the volume of water that we thought we would get. Now it was only the first year that we dug it uh, last year. So when this winter comes, um, possibly we, we may see a difference. It may fill up more. A few months ago, dug a trench across the driveway somewhere about up there. There's a track that goes up the hill and we have a lot of water that was running down our driveway. So I have dug a trench across there and I'm hoping that that will encourage water to come down this way and not down the driveway. But we won't know until it rains. If we get more water in here, that'd be good. Now our soil, even though it looks very rock hard at the moment, right? Like concrete. When it's wet, it's very... Um, sandy loamy and red and rich and easy to dig but then when it dries out it's really really hard so it when it's damp it really absorbs the water like the water just just soaks into it straight away whereas if it was more clay soil it'd probably fill up with water more because it can't absorb quick enough uh, into the ground that leads me to the thought of is this swale too big? Should we do smaller swales, but more of them, or bigger swales and less of them? Now, I'm not 100% I'm not sure on that, but it kind of makes a bit of sense to me. Like if we have a big swale and it's only filling up a tiny bit, would we be better off with multiple small swales working their way down the landscape, say quarter the size of this one, and they all fill up quite well, even though they absorb away quite fast, but then they're still filling up. So this one's filling up here, this one's filling up, the next one's filling up, as opposed just to one that sort of only quarter fills up. So yeah, I'd love to hear some thoughts on that sort of feedback as well. I mean, ultimately, if, if this filled up with water and we had water coming over this level sill, that would just be insane because that was like the end goal. So then we start talking the mound, the berm, the back, Let's talk about that. So I'm sitting on the berm. I am pretty big. It's probably from the bottom here to the back side. It's probably a good meter and a half, almost two meters. And it's about this high. Now I think that went really good. Uh, we managed to pull the, like, the top soil off as we did this and stack it up here. And we got some trees planted in it, which I must add, these trees haven't been watered for quite some time since we actually first put them in. And yeah, there's a few that have died, but there's a few that have thrived. So that's always good to know. These trees that can tolerate like almost no water after they are established for a few months is really good to know. When I dug this, I actually had the excavator on that side and I was working my way like that way and I was digging in from this side it made sense at the time but after watching several videos I think we really want to get a tilt bucket and a tilt bucket is basically a bucket that when you pick it up on the excavator instead of just being able to dig straight in you can tilt the bucket from side to side like that and that way we'll be able to track that way still but dig as we come up come along and we'll be able to dig the edges 
the slope on the angle and then berm on the angle and the bottom of it flat and shape the berm a bit easier. Um, did have a bit of trouble trying to get the berm looking nice. There was a fair bit of handwork with the rake and the shovel just to make that nice mound. But we're happy with the mound. The only real thing that kind of uh, let us down was the slope. That's about it because the level sills good, little driveway crossover with the pipe working well. We've, you know, we drive over it. The rocks kind of hold it back. We'll probably go, well, I'm just really interested to see how it changes come once the rains come. Like what's going to grow again, what's not, what's going to go green, what's going to stay like bare earth. We'll probably end up covering the rest of this bare earth with mulch and putting a bit of fresh seed on it um, when, it start, when it's winter. So I'm pretty keen to see how that turns out. So we do want to extend it that way. Uh, you'll notice in one of the videos we just kind of come to a stop because of that track. So we need to get the, the mower in come winter because it, that's another thing too that we talk about um, is we can't actually use a lawnmower. We've got like a ride on, right? We can't actually use that this time of year because the risk of fire is so high it is just incredible. Like this stuff is so dry on a hot day, it'd just take half a spark from that lawnmower blade hitting a rock. Even if the rock's only half an inch round, just that one spark and a slight bit of wind and this whole lot would be on fire in a matter of a minute. So uh, we have had a few people say, just get in there with a the mower and mow it down and chop it down and can't. Just physically, I mean, yeah, okay, physically we can. I can jump on the mower right now and start mowing. But I guarantee you, and I say that with a, with a, with a very strong voice, very strong voice, I guarantee that if I was to hit a rock, the fire would be on and it would be out of control in a matter of minutes with this long grass. And regardless that I've got a firefighting unit, like a thousand litres, 250 gallon trailer with a petrol pump and like a fire pump on it, right? That that wouldn't even touch this, wouldn't even touch it. It wouldn't. So, no mowing until it's green. We do want to take the, the swale across the track. And on the other side of the track, it looks like they've dug a small water catchment pond that is linked to a trench that runs up that other side of the driveway. So we want to try and loop, we want to try and connect them together now we can't get in there and measure the levels because the grass is up to my shoulders and we have snakes here that'll just drop you in half a second. So we're not going in there, but come winter when we can actually get in there, we'll get some, be able to take some levels and see where all these things kind of connect to each other. So that, that's a pretty exciting little project, that one. So thanks folks for the swale update. Any questions? Um, any comments, any thoughts, any knowledge that you can share uh, for our future swales or even about this one, please put it in the comments. We really like absorbing knowledge of all stuff. We are quite, we're semi capable of doing stuff, but you've got to be, you got to have the knowledge in order to do it. So please fire away. Not via away, but shoot those comments through. Appreciate that. Hope you guys have a lovely day. And thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. See ya.